Oh boy, one like sports fans, Mike Kretz here and ready to talk some lacrosse. The Montrose boys team in town taking on Grand Junction. And you know, on Tuesday, the Tigers girls, they topped the Indians. Could the boys make it two for two? Let's find out together right now. And yeah, beautiful conditions, unlike the other day. And this thing was Junction, Junction and more Junction. Getting to start in the scoring department was Chase Vanderhoofen. And he, we didn't know it at the time, but there wouldn't be a ton of Montrose opportunities. Uh, but that was thanks in part to some solid defense. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about it, but uh, right now let's talk about Junction's offense. That time is Santiago Renteria having to go. Montrose's goalie is going to see plenty more action, including right here. A sweet goal, an absolute cannon of a blast from Vanderhoofen. Have a second look. Great technique there gets into the back of the net junction already up to nothing uh you know let's talk a little bit about Renteria. he was making some good key passes this time to Montrum but the goal is disallowed so it's two nothing uh, to the second quarter we go at this point Montrose's best opportunity by far how clutch was Gordy Steidel though that time denying Jaden Cassis on an in close chance he played really well so did Renteria uh, really aggressive causing the turnover Montrum gets it back to him has a shot doesn't score takes a crunch for his effort but it'll be rewarded later here though it's Steidel rewarding the Tigers with more super her play and goal stopping, not one, but two. A big double save there to keep it locked at 2 nothing. But here's where the Tigers open the door a little bit. Renteria beats a couple defenders and sends a sneaky underhand shot in. Junction up 3 nothing. Later, Edison Dean, he's going to get the chance to show off solo. Begging the Indians defense to come out and get him. And boy, how about the distance he covers on this shot. Oh, man, Tigers up 4 nothing and looking for more with Renteria running on that right wing over there. And, and the Tigers, it's starting to make it look easy. Montrum with his first goal of the game. And I say first because he turns right around and earns a brace off the Dean face-off win. Plenty of space for him to run. And then the Tigers, went, they're just going to go tic-tac-toe. Like I said, two goals for Montrum Junction up six nothing at the half. Let's get into the scoreboard. Uh, Montrose would grab a pair of second half goals to avoid the shutout, but not enough. Junction improved a five and one on the season with a 13 to two win. It's the Tigers fifth win in a row. Junction, they look to stay perfect in league play on Friday against Glenwood Springs. Another prep score to bring you in on in girls lacrosse. How about Fruita topping Battle Mountain 8-7? to seven. The Wildcats, they hand the Huskies their first loss of the season. A very, very solid win out in Fruita. Let's talk CMU lacrosse. The women's team in Salt Lake City taking on Westminster. Maddie Kelleher with the opening shot for the Griffins. But Shannon Murphy, who played the first half with the stop, she saved eight of nine on the day. On the other end, the Mavs get, get, go to work. Kylie Davis feeds Brianna Anderson. Anderson gets it back to Davis on the cut through the middle. And that's the story of how the Mavs scored their first goal. Really the story of how they scored their second, too. Kylie Davis again gets us started over to Anderson. In comes Davis, and stop me if you've seen this play before. Mavs opening two goals scored in similar fashion in the second quarter. This will give you an idea of how ugly it was. The Mavs catch the Griffins. Just about as flat footed as you can be on defense. A runaway for CMU. Let's get you to the final. As you can see, a, a blowout it was. 17 to 3. Mesa is your final. The Mavericks improved to 4 and 1 in our rank play. They look to make it 5 and 1 against CSU Pueblo this coming Friday at Community Hospital Unity Field.